All right, Ryan, what's on your radar today? So if you live in the Washington, D.C. area, you've probably noticed that our city has been plastered with ads from a coalition saying that it represents the American solar industry, pressuring the Biden administration over solar industry trade policies. Their claim is that a new Commerce Department investigation into potentially illegal Chinese trade policies has brought a halt to imports of components needed for major solar projects. The PR campaign has resulted in a slew of articles, noting that more than 300 such projects are now on hold. Now, to be clear, it's awful that any solar projects are on hold. Communities are expecting that power generation to come online, and if we're going to hit our climate targets, we've got to move fast. And some of the financiers of the trade investigation appear to be vulture capitalists looking, just looking to leverage chaos for a shakedown of profit. Now, that's all bad, but there's more to this story. Consider this. How independent is our clean energy economy if the mere threat of an investigation into Chinese cheating in the industry can bring projects across the country grinding to a halt? And more to the point, the way that China has built its monopoly on critical components is by subsidizing extremely dirty coal-fired energy production and staffing the sector with forced labor. What's fascinating, though, is that one person who genuinely understands the importance of building a domestic solar manufacturing industry is none other than Joe Manchin. And what better place for him to lay out that philosophy than Davos at the World Economic Forum this week? Here's King Manchin, and because he's king, I want to play the full three-minute clip of his answer because where his, where, where his mind is has a lot to say about where the industry is headed. Senator Manchin, I'm going to turn to you because you are... Uh, for obvious reasons, absolutely central to any progress being made on President Biden's domestic agenda. Question one, do you think any other legislation, meaningful legislation, will get passed before the midterms? Well, first of all, we ought, to, we ought to look at what we've been able to accomplish so far, which has been tremendous, and in a bipartisan way. Everyone overlooks that, thinking we haven't done anything. President Biden has had more success than most any president in the first term, and we should agree to that. Next of all, yes, I do. I believe there's an opportunity. There's a responsibility and opportunity that we can do something. First of all, inflation is harming every uh, person in America. Everyone's feeling it hard. It's inflicting uh, pain on the world. So we should be looking at getting our financial house in order, paying down our debt. We should be looking at also our drug pricing. There's no reason in the world why we can't uh, negotiate for Medicare uh, having better pricing and also for uh, different types of medicines, especially, um, you know, whether it be for diabetes and things of this sort that they need for insulin, that that should be something that's life-saving and very affordable. Those things can be done, and we know that. And, and Next of all, the third thing is going to be energy and climate, and you can't do one without the other. The United States of America has an abundant supply of natural gas and oil. And we can use our fossil and the cleanest technology humanly possible to make sure that we are reliable, and we have reliability, and we have security. If you have that, then we're going to be able to replace some of the more pollutant energy in the world and help backfill all of EU, if you will. Natural gas, uh, we have our uh, uh, platforms that we're talking about, uh, and, and that is something that we're developing. But also we have the ability to go down two paths a passive investing in some of the technology that's going to be needed for the transition that will happen. But eliminating one and for the other one, that's the European model that Germany followed. It wasn't successful. We should not repeat that. The United States has the ability to be an energy leader and also a supporter of our allies around the world that are having problems right now. So just to be clear, to those people outside the United States who worry that the ambitious climate agenda of the president hasn't really gone very far, you're saying that there will we be We have progress. done an awful lot, and that's, that's not cracked. What we have done already in the, in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, that's, a, that's more than has ever been done. And we have so much more that we can do. But you can't do it by abandoning the fossil industry that gives us the ability to have reliability and security, not just for our nation, but what the world is needing today, all of our allies and friends. You can't abandon that. And right now we have a little bit of a... Uh, a, a discussion going on of which way this is going to go. But if we're going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars investing in a new technology that's going to be needed for the transition of a carbon-free or carbon-less environment and an energy sector, 
then you have to be able to make sure that can intersect and take care of this. You can't replace one until you have something to replace it with. And so can we pause for a moment on the fact that Manchin doesn't just hold the future of American clean energy development in his hands, but because what America does influences everyone else, the entire world has to ask this senator from West Virginia for permission to move forward? So speaking of small state senators, Manchin was actually followed by Chris Coons, who's a Delaware senator, who's a close ally of Biden's, who talked about the need to think strategically when it comes to energy independence. Now that phrase has long been code for drilling for more oil and natural gas, but as the world transitions to clean energy, the term is taking on new meaning. Today, it also means having access to the raw materials needed to make solar panels and batteries and wind turbines, as well as the manufacturing capacity, neither of which the U.S. currently has at scale. So Manchin responded to Coons this way. In Russia, Putin has weaponized energy. And I'm concerned that China could do the same with critical elements of minerals. The North American continent has the ability to be the energy juggernaut of the world. If we have Canada, United States, and Mexico, with the amount of critical minerals that we have deposits in those three countries on one continent, working together seamlessly, we will absolutely reduce our dependency on Asia, on China right now, who does 80% of the processing, has a total control, almost a monopoly, if you will, on the critical elements that we need. We can't move into electric vehicle and being dependent on foreign supply chains. The United States, that's not who we are. So in other words, saving the planet from a climate apocalypse might not be enough to get American political elites to deal with the crisis. But put it in terms they understand, great power competition, geopolitics, China, empire, and all of a sudden, it starts to seem like it's worth doing. Now, of course, the U.S. doesn't do its global strategy without input from multinational corporations, and the solar industry campaign is having an impact. That campaign, by the way, is funded by multiple companies with production operations in China. Now, the stalled projects understandably have people concerned, but two points about that. One, China has done this before, halting exports at a critical moment for political leverage. That part's nothing new. But there's also something else going on that becomes obvious when you step back and think about it. Why might solar companies not want to ship us their goods right now? Hmm. Is there anybody else who surged into the market recently thanks to their primary supplier of energy deciding to invade Ukraine? Yes, exactly. Europe is massively driving up the price of clean energy inputs and is buying as much as humanly possible. There has been one interesting development, though, since the commerce investigation and the threat to make Chinese companies play fair. A South Korean-based solar company that owns a massive manufacturing plant in Georgia announced it would be investing $320 million in a major new expansion, specifically citing the uncertainties in the market. And Emily, they, all of the different trade industry publications that reported on this read into this that it was the Commerce Department investigation, the threat that they're going to make China play fair, that got this Korean company to say, oh, well, then there's a huge market in the U.S. now for actually manufacturing solar components right here. So they're like, hey, let's put $320 million in here. This is exactly what trade policy is supposed to do, and it's exactly why these, this kind of China-funded uh, solar trade industry is is trying to stop it from happening because they don't want us investing in a solar industry. They want to make all the panels, ironically, of course, with subsidized coal, you know, burning up their you know, Western Chinese sand and turning yes. it into the wafers that then turn into solar panels. Well, yeah, and that's the bottom line. It's that like there is there money to be made in the industry, sure, but there's still a lot of money to be made polluting in other countries that have just completely mm -hmm. different politics than ours. And so when John Kerry was asked, he's our, our, what our global climate envoy, I don't forget what fancy title he has, um, about the balance of you know confronting China for their human rights abuses and dealing with them on climate, he, it's actually legitimately in his head, he's saying, well, if we don't get China on climate, then we don't get climate. And it's the same with India. And there are these massive countries where it's like, we can do 
literally everything in this country. We could have the most, the smallest carbon footprint possible for all of America. And without cooperation from China and without cooperation from India, um, we're going to still be in really, really rough shape. And so we're then again, energy independence becomes not really a thing because your energy independence, if it's clean energy, if it's uh, traditional energy sources, it's still tied to these other countries that we have all of these foreign conflicts with, which at the end of the day, it's like, well, great, right. here we are. <laughs> right, and we shouldn't fool ourselves. Like the, 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 a significant way that we cleaned up our pollution in the United States in the 70s and 80s was by shipping our pollution off to China and India and, and other countries. It wasn't, ju it wasn't just that we went for the low we wages. We still do that. We're, and we still we do that. Still so, do it. so if we're drawing down our carbon emissions numbers by having China build more and more coal plants yes. in Western China to produce the solar panels that then drive our solar manufacturing capacity into the ground, that's, that's not getting us where we need to be. And Manchin makes a really good point about the potential for North America. Mexico just recently announced that they were nationalizing a bunch of uh, lith lithium deposits yeah. that they found there. Can you know, so the Canada, the U.S., and Mexico could easily become kind of the beating heart of the clean energy industry around the country. But we can't do it if we're going to allow China to basically wipe out our domestic capacity. Yeah, and I was going to say exactly two things. Rare earth minerals in China, mm -hmm. things that are used to make, for instance, tes Tesla batteries. Mm -hmm. These are like I incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah. And even just, um, and Manchin actually made that point, but so you have the rare earth min mineral deposits in China. You have, um, and we have some of that in this country too, but then we also have, um, like say, the transition to, to crypto was supposed to be great for the environment. <laughs> well, no, because it, I mean, but like right, Bitcoin yeah, mining the takes Texas, yeah. right, and so yeah. all of these like new solutions are still in in so many ways, unless it is renewables, like fundamentally tethered to the energy that we have now, or to um, deposits in other countries or resources in other countries, and so the transition in and of itself. Manchin, you're right. He he makes a good point that it, this is like way rockier than um, I think it it seems at times. Right, and so. And people should remember that if, if their solar project is on hold right now, so let's say Indiana or elsewhere, they're seeing a bunch of these projects on hold, it's actually probably not necessarily because of this Commerce Department investigation. It's because all of these companies are breaking their contracts with the U.S. and selling to yeah. Europe for double. Right. And, and yeah. there... Which we, is a, it shows you that we need more capacity. Like, it's, absolutely. And then it also shows you that um, we need to, I mean, a lot of things need to change in order for this off ramp basically mm -hmm. to be smooth. Um, be, we, and we are not there right now. Yeah. yeah. And a bunch of jobs in Georgia. Right. Hey, can't beat that. That's right. <laughs> we'll have more rising right after this.